Hey everyone, Corpano X here once again, and welcome back to another episode of Monster Talks. Monster Talks is a series that explores the different characteristics of the different monsters that have arrived within Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In our previous episode of the series, we took a look at the characteristics of the monster titled as the Swift Wyvern, which was none other than the Nargakuga itself. If you would like to check out that previous episode of Monster Talks, as well as all other previous episodes of the series, feel free to check the link down in the description below for the full playlist of the Monster Talks series. In today's episode of Monster Talks, we are going to be taking a look at the next flagship monster that we get introduced to within Monster Hunter World Iceborne. This particular monster is infamous for its uniquely shaped tail and alongside this, its unusual rivalry with the Rathian within the Monster Hunter series. This particular flagship also shares its position as a flagship with three other monsters within the series itself, conglomerating into the collective group known as the Faded Four. This monster is none other than the cutting wyvern, the Glavinus itself. The Glavinus, a monster infamous for its uniquely shaped tail, and of course, its unusual rivalry with the Rathian itself in the Monster Hunter series, continuing it on within Monster Hunter World Iceborne. This monster first made its debut as one of the flagship monsters within Monster Hunter Generations, sharing its position as a flagship with three other monsters in the game itself, which create the group known as the Faded Four, or different monsters that rival the four different villages within Monster Hunter Generations. Being a member of the Faded Four has a twofold meaning to it. First and foremost, they rivaled each of the villages that was available within the game itself, but second of all and most importantly, each of members of the Faded Four were actually a representation of a specific generation of Monster Hunter games throughout the series overall. Each monster was a representation of a specific group of Monster Hunter games within that specific generation. First and foremost, we have the Astalos itself representing the first generation of Monster Hunter games with Kokoto Village as its main rival. Second generation is represented by Gamoth itself rivaling Poke Village in order to maintain that second generation theme within this particular monster. Third generation was represented by the Leviathan Mizutsune as well as its rivalry with Yukumo Village. And finally, we have ourselves the Glavinus itself rivaling the newest village available within Monster Hunter Generations which was none other than Burna Village. Being a rival of Burna Village meant that the Glavinus itself was the penultimate flagship monster within this particular game due to the sheer fact that not only did it rival the most recent village within this particular game, but also the sheer fact that it also represented the fourth generation of Monster Hunter games which Monster Hunter Generations was released in, thereby meaning that the Glavinus itself was the penultimate monster to be able to represent the game itself in its entirety as a flagship monster thus making its way into the new world within the Iceborne expansion. Within Monster Hunter World Iceborne, the Glavinus makes its way into the new world, making its home within the ancient forest as well as the Wild Spy Race, and of course, traveling through the Guiding Lands itself in order to challenge all of the monsters within this particular region. In the Iceborne expansion, the Glavinus itself takes on its usual combat mechanics that it had in previous generation games and alongside this, adapting some new movesets never seen before in its previous incarnation in order to combat all of the creatures within the new world, whether they be monsters or hunters alike. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the key characteristics when it comes to the Glavinus itself within the new world within Monster Hunter World Iceborne. First and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at the overall physical appearance of the Glavinus itself within the Iceborne expansion. This monster takes on the general shape and silhouette of a usual brute wyvern that we see within the Monster Hunter series overall, thereby meaning that it shares a lot of characteristics with the other brute wyverns in the game itself, but having its own unique anatomy to make it separate from the other brute wyverns. 
In terms of its general shape and silhouette being that of a brute wyvern structure, this means that the Glavinus itself has a large muscular body, a short neck, an average size head, large muscular legs, small arms, and a long tail. When it comes to the tail of the Glavinus, because this particular monster has a focus within this particular body part, the tail of the Glavinus is far longer than some of the other monsters that we see in the game as of right now, thereby giving it a slightly unique silhouette in comparison to some of the other brute wyverns that we see in the game as of right now. In terms of unique anatomy to the Glavinus itself, first and foremost, let's take a look at the coloration of the body itself. Underneath the Glavinus's neck and underbelly, you can see a creamish brown coloration underneath the Glavinus's neck and underbelly. In terms of the majority of the coloration of the Glavinus itself, we have a dark red coloration that spans across the tip of the Glavinus's head all the way to the base of the tail. Alongside this, the Glavinus has some unique platings that run across its body that take on a dark blue coloration, giving the Glavinus itself its fiery look when it comes to its overall coloration. In terms of unique physical characteristics, first and foremost, let's take a look at the Glavinus's head. The Glavinus head has a far more square shape to it in comparison to some of the more rectangular or oval shape that we see when it comes to most other brute wyverns in the series itself. This unique square-like structure of the Glavinus's head does serve a purpose when it comes to actually fighting the monster. First and foremost, it is supported by a number of the dark blue plating that go across the entire body of the Glavinus itself. These dark blue platings actually do have a purpose, first and foremost, to protect the Glavinus's face because you can actually break these body parts. And second of all, when it comes to the dark blue platings, they actually have a protrusion across the Glavinus's mouth that many people mistake for the actual teeth of the monster itself. In reality, these dark blue platings are actually used to sharpen the Glavinus's tail during combat, so they do serve a purpose outside of protecting the Glavinus's overall facial structure. As we move down the body of the Glavinus itself, you'll notice that there's large protrusions that go on the very back of the Glavinus itself, with smaller protrusions going towards the top of the head and towards the base of the tail. When it comes to these protrusions, they take on a unique flame-like aesthetic to them in terms of their patterns, and there's two rows of them that go down the back of the Glavinus itself, with the largest spike plate protrusions at the very center of the Glavinus's body. Alongside this, if you take a look at the leg of the Glavinus itself, it also has that unique flame-like plating to it that is seen around the very top of the Glavinus's body. So overall, these unique platings do have this unique structure to them, and alongside this, they have a very unique coloration to create that fiery-like appearance when it comes to the Glavinus's overall coloration. Finally, we have ourselves the most unique part of this particular monster, which is none other than the tail of the Glavinus. The tail of the Glavinus takes on a sword formation never seen before on any other monster within the game itself or the entire Monster Hunter series. This unique sword-like formation when it comes to the Glavinus' tail takes on three different states depending on the combat mechanic of the Glavinus itself when it's fighting a hunter or any other monsters. First and foremost, when it comes to the tail of the Glavinus, it takes on the rusted tail state, which has a very rusted coloration to it, which is usually around the reddish brown coloration that you would see with most real life rust. Second of all, when the Glavinus decides to sharpen its tail, it will take on this bright blue sheen on it, indicating that the tail has been sharpened and you can really see the edge of this particular tail due to its keenness. You can definitely see a contrast between the rusted tail and the sharpened tail state when the Glavinus decides to sharpen its tail during combat. Finally, when it comes to the Glavinus, the more it uses its tail, the more it starts to generate heat. The more it generates heat, eventually it will reach a state known as the heated tail state, which takes on a bright red coloration and gives the tail its fiery properties. Overall, the Glavinus itself is a very uniquely structured monster because first and foremost, it has some unique fiery aesthetics to it that you don't see with the other brute wyverns. And alongside this, it also has the unique tail structure that it has, which is akin to that of a great sword. This is a monster with an actual weapon type in the Monster Hunter series in mind and creating a monster around it, making it a very unique creature to be seen both in the old world and the new world itself. Cutting our way through the rest of the characteristics of the monster itself, let's take a look at how the Glavinus behaves within the new world itself. 
As an apex predator within the ancient forest, the wild spire waste, the elder's recess, as well as the guiding lands, the Glavinus itself is considered as an aggressive monster within the game itself. This means that when the Glavinus encounters any hunters or any monsters, eventually it will engage them in combat. For the hunters out there who want to survey the Glavinus itself and do not want to engage it in combat, be aware of the Glavinus' overall aggression as you will be warned by the eye icon on the minimap itself that the Glavinus is getting angrier the more you stay in its line of sight. So the best way to survey this monster is to avoid direct line of sight of the monster itself, otherwise it will eventually engage you in combat. In terms of combat aggression, the monster is a very aggressive monster when it fights. It tends to take on both monsters and hunters alike regardless of the situation, so it will switch between targeting hunters or targeting monsters if other monsters are within vicinity of the Glavinus itself. This is a very aggressive monster. When the Glavinus becomes enraged, it takes on a bright red coloration on the plated spikes that go around across its back, indicating that this monster has become even angrier and would use far more advanced moves than when it's not at rage. So do be careful when fighting this monster because it will start to use far more aggressive movesets and far more deadly attacks when fighting it when it's enraged. Overall, the Glavinus is a very aggressive monster worthy of the title of an apex predator within the new world itself. Having observed the way the monster behaves, let's now take a look at the combat capabilities and attack patterns of the Glavinus itself. First and foremost, the Glavinus itself is a monster that takes advantage of its unique anatomy, in this case scenario, its uniquely shaped tail. Because the tail itself is large, much like that of an actual greatsword, it deals a heavy amount of damage to any players that do get hit by the tail itself. This means that the main advantage that the Glavinus has is its capability to bombard its enemies with physical tail attacks. Having said all of this, the tail itself also comes in three different states. This means that depending on the situation, you will be dealing with a different state of the Glavinus's tail. First and foremost, you have the dull rusted tail state in which the Glavinus's tail looks rusted. In this state, the Glavinus' tail has the added advantage of having the rust act like armor, meaning that if you're looking to sever the tail of the Glavinus, this will be one of the more defensive capabilities that the Glavinus has on its tail, meaning that you'll be dealing less damage, making it harder to actually break or sever the tail of the Glavinus itself in this state. Next up, you have the sharpened tail state. Now whilst the Glavinus doesn't gain any advantages when it comes to the state of its tail, it does gain the added advantage of having a projectile when it sharpens its tail. This is because of the fact that the rust covering the tail now acts as molten material for the Glavinus to use as projectile by combining it with the fire sac in its throat. So whilst the tail itself does not gain any advantages when it becomes sharpened, the Glavinus itself does gain an advantage by having the added projectile attacks that it has using the rust from its tail. Finally, we have ourselves the heated tail state, which is the most powerful state of the Glavinus' tail. In this state, not only does the Glavinus deal a significant amount of damage due to the tail itself, but now it has the added property of causing fire blight to players, meaning that anyone who gets hit by the tail will start to burn. Overall, the tail of the Glavinus itself is very unique, and not only that, with the three different states, the Glavinus itself can take advantage of the different state of its tail when fighting any monsters or hunters alike. With a better understanding of how the Glavinus fights, as well as the three different state of its tail, let's now take a look at the attack patterns of this particular monster. First and foremost, you have yourself a very basic biting attack when it comes to the Glavinus itself. It either bites hunters once or twice in rapid succession. Next up, you have a very basic 180 degree tail spin. When the Glavinus itself is facing away from the players, it will swipe the players by actually using its tail to catch players off guard as it's turning around. Many players may think that the Glavinus is simply turning around, however there is actually a hitbox when it comes to the tail of the Glavinus itself. Following this, we have the grounded tail sweep from the Glavinus itself. The Glavinus will simply sweep its tail on the ground, hitting any players in the path of its tail. It can either do this towards the left or towards the right of the players. Next up, you have yourself a 360 degree tail sweep from the Glavinus itself which creates a fiery explosion. By sweeping its tail on the ground, 
In a 360 degree motion, the Glavinus itself can create a fiery explosion that has a relative distance between itself and towards the players. This means that any players that think that they have a good distance from themselves and the Glavinus might get caught off guard by this attack because the fiery explosion can actually reach them from quite a distance. Both the fiery explosion and the tail itself have a hitbox, meaning that when you're too close to the Glavinus, you might get hit, or if you're at a certain distance, you might get hit from the fiery explosion. Next up, you have a very basic tail slam attack. Using the full weight of its tail, it'll slam its tail towards the ground, dealing a significant amount of damage to anyone that gets caught with this particular attack. When the Glavinus becomes enraged, this attack becomes enhanced with the Glavinus itself performing a ground sweep as a follow-up to this particular attack. So do watch out for it if the Glavinus is enraged. When the Glavinus finally decides to sharpen its tail, the Glavinus now has the rusted material as molten fireball that it can use as projectiles. First and foremost, it has a very basic projectile in which it will spit a single fireball towards the players. The fireball can actually linger on the ground for a couple of seconds until eventually it explodes. The other version of the fireball attack is a triple fireball similar to that of the Rathian itself. The Glavinus will spit three fireballs one at a time towards the players. Each of these fireballs have been spat in three different times, meaning that they all explode individually at three different times. Finally, we have ourselves the two signature attacks of the Glavinus itself. First and foremost, we have the Aerial Tail Slam. The Glavinus will use its powerful legs to leap into the air and then slam its tail towards the ground with great force decimating any players that get caught with the tail itself. This particular attack can become enhanced when the Glavinus becomes enraged. When the Glavinus is enraged, after performing the initial aerial tail slam, it will then quickly follow it up with a grounded tail slam in the opposite direction. So anyone who thinks they may have avoided the initial tail slam may get caught off guard by rolling towards the second attack itself. So do watch out when the Glavinus is enraged because this attack now becomes a double hit. And finally, we have ourselves the signature move of the Glavinus itself, which is the 360 degree super tail spin of the Glavinus itself. This particular attack is usually performed when the tail is heated. However, the tail itself can cool off at times when the Glavinus is performing the initial animation for this particular attack. The Glavinus will grab its tail and starts pulling it in order to create a great force in order for it to spin around at a 360 degree motion, creating the super tail spin. Anyone who gets caught with this particular attack will get dealt heavy damage towards them as this is the most powerful attack of the Glavinus itself, being considered as a sort of signature move or a super move from the Glavinus itself. Overall, the Glavinus takes advantage of its uniquely shaped tail as its main weapon when decimating any monsters or hunters as it fights. And depending on the state of its tail, it will have different properties depending on the situation. Each time the Glavinus generates heat, all of its tail attacks will now have fire blight capabilities, meaning that players will need to start rolling around to remove the fire blight. Overall, the Glavinus is a very adaptive monster and one that is capable of using its uniquely shaped tail in order to truly decimate any and every creature within the new world itself. From the way it looks all the way to the way it fights, the Glavinus is an awesome addition to the group of veteran monsters that make their arrival in the new world within the Iceborne expansion. In terms of its overall looks, Capcom has managed to evolve the overall appearance of the Glavinus itself in comparison to its previous iteration within Monster Hunter Generations. You can really see the finer details when it comes to this particular monster, and alongside this, you can actually see the huge differences in the state of its tail when you're fighting this particular monster, giving you an idea as to what you're dealing with in terms of its tail capabilities when you're fighting the monster. In previous generation games, perhaps you could tell the difference between the sharpened tail and the heated tail, but you won't realize that the tail has been rusted and dulled due to the fact that there's graphical limitations in previous generation games. But in Iceborne, you can really tell that the tail has rusted because of the amount of details on the rust of the tail itself. Overall, this is an amazing addition to the Glavinus in terms of its graphical enhancements in the Iceborne expansion. Finally, when it comes to its combat capabilities, this is a monster that many consider as a rival if they are using a greatsword. 
This is because of the fact that its unique design really shows what a monster is capable of if they are using a specific weapon type within the game itself. There are certain monsters in Monster Hunter World and Iceborne that do look like they are using some form of weapon type in the game itself. However, the Glavinus is the only one that truly utilizes its great sword like tail with great efficiency. So this is a monster that much like any other great sword user will deal significant amount of damage to you due to the fact that it's very effective in using its great sword like tail. And the evolution of the way it actually uses projectile is something that I welcome. In previous generation games, it can simply generate the molten material in order to use it as a projectile. However, in Iceborne, they evolved it so that it actually uses the rust from its tail in order to create that molten projectile. So it no longer just generates it from the get-go without any reason at all. There's actually a reason behind it and it's actually using the rust from its tail in order to create the molten projectiles. Overall, these key changes and some of the new attack patterns on the Glavinus itself really make it an awesome experience when you're fighting it in the new world when it comes to the Iceborne expansion. The Glavinus is definitely a welcome addition, and I can't wait to see what Capcom has planned for us if they ever do bring in the rest of the Faded 4 into the new world in future title DLC updates in the Iceborne expansion or in future Monster Hunter games. And that is pretty much it for this episode of Monster Talks. In the next episode of the series, we are going to be taking a look at the characteristics of a monster that predates the Nargakuga in terms of being a flagship monster. This is also going to be a monster that many people will know as quite infamous for rushing towards them with reckless abandon and using its powerful lungs to decimate players by damaging them with its powerful roar. This is going to be none other than the roaring wyvern that is the Tigrex. If you enjoyed this episode of the Monster Talk series as well as all other previous episodes, please consider leaving a like on the video itself and subscribing to the channel as well as hitting that bell icon so you can go ahead and catch up on the next episode of the Monster Talk series as well as future Monster Hunter content that I might be doing or any other games that I might be playing in future. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time, onward and upward.